Good morning, students. Today I'm going to discuss about the ray optics. Okay, lecture one. In this lecture, we are going to see about the introduction. Introduction to optics. Okay, I think all of you have studied about the optics or so-called light in your tenth class. Okay, the same thing. In the same basics we are going to study and then here we are going to see about the plane mirror and its problems okay applications and numericals okay in this lecture we are going to concentrate on this one okay now fine fine now <clears throat> This optics is a branch in physics which deals about the properties of the light. Properties of the light. Okay. Optics is a branch in physics which deals with the properties of the light. Firstly, before going to see the optics, here optics is divided into two types. Optics is divided into two types one is geometrical optics geometrical optics are so called we can also call them ray optics ray optics and then another one it is physical optics physical optics or we can also call it as wave optics Now, firstly, it is prior to this one, how we got this ray optics and wave optics means, firstly, we are having the Newton corpuscular theory. Newton corpuscular theory. According to this theory, it says that every light particle will travel in the form of a particles in which these particles, Newton called it as corpuscles. Corpuscles. That means, according to this theory, Newton considered that light rays, light rays will behave or travels like particles, like particle. Okay? Particle or particles. So that means entire this Newton corpuscular theory, he explained the light nature, particle nature of the light. Particle nature of the light. Now, next one it is after this, we got the okay, we have the this one now, that is Huygens wave theory. Huygens wave theory okay according to this according to this light ray will travel okay light ray will travel in the form of a waves light waves behaves like waves that means it will travel in the form of a wave nature that means it will travel in the form of a wave nature. Okay. Okay, fine. Now you can see that here it is. Okay. Here that means light ray is having the both particle nature and wave nature. This particle nature is explained by is explained. Okay. By we are having this one. Okay that is ray optics and the wave nature of the light we will observe in the or we will study in the wave optics okay is it clear in entire the ray optics we are going to study the particle nature that is whenever it is particle nature then i will study about the with respect to the distance distance 
displacement, velocity, comma, acceleration, etc. Like these properties, we are going to study. Whenever it is wave nature, whenever it is wave nature, then I used to study like amplitude, amplitude, comma, wavelength, wavelength, comma, intensity, etc. Okay, na? Is it fine? So, in the particle nature, we are studying the properties as distance, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. Whereas in the wave nature, the fundamental properties are amplitude, wavelength, and then intensity. And then intensity. That is the main. Okay, fine. Now, firstly, we'll see the what is meant by intensity. What is meant by intensity? Okay. Let us consider the some chapters like wave motion, oscillations, and then wave optics. Okay. In all these topics, in all these topics, we will get the intensity. Whenever the particle is behaving in the form of a wave nature, in the form of a wave nature, then we'll have this intensity. Then we'll have this intensity. That is, I can define the intensity as amount of energy absorbed or emitted amount of energy absorbed or emitted or emitted per unit area per unit area and per unit time and per unit time can be called as intensity can be called as intensity okay na can be called as intensity say for example let us consider an area okay wherever you are sitting okay in that room will have the light let us consider an area okay let us consider an area near to the light and far away from the light far away from the light i can say that the area which is nearer to the light will have more number of light rays are absorbed okay with respect to surface i can say energy absorption with respect to the source of light i can say energy emission okay here my frame of reference it is either with the surface or with respect to the light with respect to light means i can say energy emission with respect to surface means i can say energy absorption okay the mathematical formula it is intensity is indicated with i that is energy emitted or energy absorbed per unit area and per unit time since i know that energy by time okay energy by time that is power energy will be in the form of work done work done by time means nothing but rate of doing work so power by area so here we can say that the si unit si unit of intensity is watt per meter square watt per meter square okay na fine okay fine and then next comes to our ray optics comes to our ray optics okay you can see the firstly we consider the optics is the branch in physics which deals about the properties of the light here we are having the properties of the light as distance displacement velocity and acceleration okay okay fine now in this one firstly we are having that we are having the definitions like object object and then image and then image okay and thereafter we are having the 
focus. Okay, like this, we are having the definitions and then principal axis. Principal axis. Okay, okay, fine. Firstly, we'll see the what is meant by object. Okay, what is meant by object? Suppose let us consider I'm having a source of light. I'm having a source of light. Let us consider it as S. Okay. Now you can see the we are having the different sources of light are there. Okay. One thing I will consider the light as torch light, and another one it is star headlight. Another one it is street light. All these I can say that it is sources of light. Sources of light, different sources. Okay. If I if I take that torch light, that light rays are coming from the battery. In, inside the torch light, we are having the battery. That means battery is giving the chemical energy. Okay. In turn, the in the torch light, that chemical energy is converted into the light energy. Right? Okay, now. Even in the car, also the same thing. Okay. Inside the car, we are having the battery. That battery is giving chemical energy. From the battery, we will get chemical energy. That bad chemical energy is converted into the light energy. Okay. Everywhere it is like that. Okay. Some form of energy is converted to light energy. Even in our house also, we are providing the electrical energy to the source. Such that, that by using that electrical energy, light rays are emitted. So that we are getting the light energy. So that we are getting the light energy. And for this light energy, Max Planck explained a beautiful theory. That is Planck quantum theory. He considered that light ray will be in the form of a photon. Will be in the form of a photon. And it is having an energy that is E equal to H nu. Where nu is the frequency of the incident light. Frequency of the incident light. Okay, na? Is it fine? Frequency of the incident light. Okay. Suppose if we have one photon, energy is H nu. Like that, if I'm having the number of photons, okay, suppose small n is number of photons, then I can write the energy of this n number of photons, I can write as nh nu. And if we are having the more than one photon, we can call it as quanta. We can call it as quanta. So the energy of a quanta will be equal to nh nu. nh nu. Suppose I'm having a source of light. Okay. I'm having a source of light. You can see here. Okay. Okay. By applying some energy such that light rays will be emitted outside. Like this. Right. Light rays will be emitted in all the directions. In all the directions. Okay, now. Fine. Okay. So, object it is defined as the, it is the source in which all the light rays, all the light rays will be emitted out. Okay. And then image. Suppose I am having an source or object I am having an object. Whenever it comes to the object, object will be of two types. Object will be of two types. One is point size object and another one it is extended object. Point object and extended object. Okay, na? Fine. Okay, na? Fine. Okay, now the point object, 
if the size of the object if the size of the object is very small that means like the size of a nib of a pen or nib of a syringe then we can call it as a point object okay it can be described as if the size of the object okay is very small like the or approximately the size of the size of the nib of a pen or syringe machine then we can call them point object then we can call them point object collection of point objects you can see here i am drawing okay collection of point objects can be called as can be called as extended object that's why every time we'll join this point objects such that we'll have like this this can be called as extended object this we can say that it is collection of point objects can be called as can be called as extended object okay now we'll come to the image we'll come to the image image is defined as point of intersection of the reflected light rays or refracted light rays point of intersection of the reflected light rays or refracted light rays can be called as image can be called as image next focus whenever the light rays are incident on any device like mirror or lens or any optical instrument okay any optical instrument it will be focused at a point say for example whenever i am seeing okay whenever i am um, seeing any object or whenever i am seeing a movie in the laptop i am seeing okay at a particular area at a particular area so whatever my eyes are concentrated it is concentrated at a point or at a region okay that can be called as focus with respect to this focus with respect to this focus afterwards we have that field of view field of view field of view means in short we can write it as fov the area or region in which in which the light rays are incident on an optical device the area or region in which the light rays will be incident on an optical device like mirror lens prism okay or microscope or telescope like this okay and next one it is principal axis next one it is principal axis okay principal axis it says that the axis which is passing through the center of the mirror and perpendicular to the mirror and perpendicular to the mirror can be called as principal axis the axis which is passing through the center of the mirror center of the mirror and perpendicular to the mirror can be called as principal axis principal axis next one it is pole pole it is defined as the center of mirror can be called as the pole the center of the mirror can be called as the pole can be called as the pole now here we are having that we are having that firstly we are having about the plane mirror we are having about the plane mirror okay we'll discuss about the plane mirror okay na fine 
a plane mirror is formed by having an reflecting surface a thin transparent glass medium okay in which one of the face it is a reflecting surface and the other surface is coated with an optically inactive substance or with an insulator or with an insulator okay and the combined system we can call it as mirror and the combined system can be called as mirror okay that is one face is reflecting and another surface it is silvered this i can call it as the plane mirror okay now here we are going to see the what are the properties of the plane mirror what are the properties of the plane mirror okay okay for that here what i am doing that it is here what i am doing it is let us consider a plane mirror let us consider a plane mirror like this okay such that one of the surface is reflecting surface and the other surface is and the other surface is silvered let us consider i am having a plane mirror mn mn in this i am having an center point as the pole as the pole as we discussed we are having a principal axis that is the axis which is passing through the pole of the mirror and perpendicular to the mirror that means here we are having that this is my principal axis okay na principal axis fine when all the light rays are incident it will be focused okay it will be focused at a large distance you can see the plane mirror <coughs> okay suppose let us consider here i am having an object i am considering an extended object okay even i can consider point object also even i can consider point object also now i want to define the what type of image will be formed for an for an real object for real object what type of image will be formed that we are going to discuss okay is it fine okay na okay okay fine now let us consider a light ray which is passing parallel to the principal axis parallel to the principal axis okay let us consider this light ray as one due to the property of the plane mirror it will be diverges it will be diverges suppose let us consider here it is okay this is one prime and let us consider another light ray another light ray this is my second light ray second light ray after after reflection okay we have it. this is one prime and two prime are the reflecting light rays okay whenever we extend it back whenever we extend it back okay whenever we extend it back okay such that it forms an it forms an image okay i will extend it okay carefully see here we are having an image such that from a dash b dash is my image 
and AB is my object such that from pole to the image we can call it as image distance and from pole to the object we can call it an object distance since by extending it back extending it back we got an image so it can be called as virtual image and image is formed above the principal axis so i can call it as erect image erect image you can see the size of the object is equal to the size of the image or size of the image is formed okay according to the size of the image so and same in size and same in size image is formed same in size such that we can say that u is equal to minus u. how much distance okay the object is placed with the same distance with the same distance image will also be formed image will also be formed now here the negative sign is there the negative sign is there okay that in order to describe that when the image distance is positive and when the image distance is negative okay we are having the we are having the sign convention okay we are having the sign convention that is sign convention you can see sign convention sign convention okay na fine okay fine now um see here it is the properties of the properties these are the properties of the plane mirror okay all of you underline and all of you must remember this one okay this virtual erect and then same in size these are the properties okay na fine i am for your sake i am underlining it okay and thereafter you also remember that it is in the plane mirror object distance is equal to the image distance okay with respect to sign only it will be different okay that is if the object is in front of the mirror then image will be formed at behind the mirror behind the mirror this is the first property and this one it is the second property right now you can see that here the for the plane mirror or for a plane surface radius will be infinity radius will be infinity so i can say that i can say that focal length will also be infinity will also be infinity okay na fine next one it is sign convention sign convention listen carefully all of you listen carefully okay suppose i am having a plane mirror i am having a plane mirror in which one of the surface is reflecting surface and the other surface is silvered and the other surface is silvered with respect to the pole of the mirror we are having the principal axis with respect to the pole of the mirror we are having the principal axis again i am repeating principal axis is defined as the axis which is passing through the pole of the mirror and perpendicular to the mirror okay suppose if i am having that if i am having that here i am having an object that means light rays will be incident light rays will be incident like this in any direction
okay na like this like this will be incident that means i can say that towards right is my direction of incident light towards right is my direction of incident light direction of light is towards right side okay na fine this is my pole whenever i am measuring the object distance firstly the first rule it is that all distances are to be measured from pole only all the distances are to be measured from pole only from the pole only second rule it is that if the measured distance either object distance or image distance okay either object distance or image distance approximately here i am having the image image it is a dash b dash this is my image distance and this is my object distance now here you can see i am measuring the distance object distance which is opposite to the direction of incident light right and image distance i am measuring along the direction of incident light okay opposite to the direction of incident light opposite to the direction of incident light direction of incident light can be taken as okay can be taken as negative along the direction of incident light taken as positive along the direction of incident light whereas along the direction of incident light taken as positive direction of incident light can be taken as positive okay na fine is it okay okay that one next third rule that is the last rule if the object or image lies above principal axis if the object or or image lies above principal axis then the size of object or image is taken as positive whereas if object or image lies below the principal axis below the principal axis okay then it can be taken as negative principal axis can be taken as negative can be taken as negative okay these are the three rules in which we can decide the whether the object distance is positive or negative and the image distance is positive or negative okay na fine okay now you can see everywhere here we are discussing the everywhere here we are discussing the two types of rays two types of rays okay that is number 1 it is that paraxial rays paraxial rays that means the light rays which are nearer to the principal axis the light rays nearer to the principal axis can be called as paraxial rays okay and another one it is marginal rays marginal rays marginal rays which are far away to the principal axis can be called as marginal rays in our board cbsc or any state board and iit je mains and advanced in even in the neat or in any private entrance 
we are having the in the syllabus we are having in the syllabus it is only the paraxial rays that's why always we'll consider light rays near to the principal axis okay either in the mirror or in the lens either in the mirror or in the lens okay fine okay now we know the sign convention and the characteristics of the plane mirror characteristics of the plane mirror right okay these are the characteristics now we will have the applications of the plane mirror applications of plane mirror applications of the plane mirror okay that is suppose firstly let us consider i am having a plane mirror like this such that one of the face one of the face it is silvered one of the face it is silvered okay na fine now let us consider a light ray ab a light ray ab is incident on the plane mirror okay whenever the light ray is incident okay i need to show okay i need to show the direction of light every time you must indicate the direction of the light okay in which direction the light was incident that is the must that is the must okay at the point of incidence you can see this is my point of incidence this is my point of incidence right with respect to the point of incidence with respect to the point of incidence we should draw a normal we should draw a normal we should draw a normal okay let me draw the normal okay fine okay now the angle made by the incident ray with respect to the normal can be called as angle of incidence and this normal i am indicating with m okay okay whenever the light ray is incident that means this light ray is having an energy this light ray is having an energy i will call it as e1 okay since the the other surface it is silver so some the a part of light will be reflected back into the same medium into the same medium so it can be called as reflected ray it can be called as reflected ray now with respect to the normal the angle made by the the angle made by the reflected ray can be called as angle of reflection angle of reflection observe carefully angle between okay observe carefully angle between normal and plane mirror is 90 degrees right is it right so the angle made by the incident ray with respect to the plane mirror how much it will be this angle i can write it as 90 minus i this 90 minus i i can call it as glancing angle of incidence glancing angle of incidence okay na fine glancing angle of incidence similarly here we are having the reflected ray okay we are having the direction the angle between normal and this side plane mirror is 90 so 
here i'll have an angle 90 minus r and this 90 minus r i can call it as glancing angle of reflection angle of reflection okay okay now fine so how much the light energy is incident on the plane mirror with the same energy will have for the reflector ray if the plane mirror does not absorb energy if it absorbs if it absorbs then some of the energy will be absorbed by the plane mirror so e2 will be less than e1 e2 will be less than e1 first application it is my first application it is that suppose let us consider i'm having a plane mirror okay i'm having a plane mirror okay whose the length of the mirror it is d okay at a distance l at a distance l we are having an point object b okay at a distance l we are having a point object b okay now <coughs> i want to find what is the greatest distance over which he can see the image of the light source what is the greatest distance that is Write on the question. Okay. Example one. Concern to this application. Okay. I'm giving the question. That is, write on the question. A point source of light. I am writing here. You can see. All of you write down. A point source of light B is placed is placed at a distance at a distance l at a distance l in front of the in front of the center of a mirror center of a mirror Center of a mirror of width D. Okay, now of width D. Hung vertically, hung vertically on a wall. A man walks. A man walks in front of the mirror in front of the mirror along a line parallel to the mirror parallel to the mirror at a distance at a distance to L from it as shown. Okay. Fine. As shown. We are having the diagram. I'll draw the diagram. Okay. The greatest distance, the greatest distance. over which he can see the image of the light source of the light source image of the light source in the mirror is in the mirror 
is write down options that is d by 2 second option d 2d and fourth option it is 3d okay na this is the question this is the question here you can see the solution that is diagram is there na diagram is there draw the diagram this is the width of the mirror d here we are having an object which is at a distance l from the mirror at a distance 2l at a distance 2l we are having a man man is walking okay na fine hmm draw the diagram and see the question once see the question okay na see the question i'm having that it is i'm having that it is a point source of light b is placed at a distance okay you can see b is placed at a distance l in front of the in front of the center of a mirror okay center of a mirror of width d right okay na okay fine hang vertically a man walks in front of the mirror man is walking in front of a mirror in front of the mirror okay okay fine. along a line along a line parallel to the okay along a line parallel to the mirror at a distance to l you can see this part so here man is walking parallel to the mirror at a distance of 2l at a distance of 2l right okay fine now like this type of problems what we need to see it is first we need to find the no what is the position of the object and where the image is okay we need to find that we need to find that the greatest distance the greatest distance we need to find greatest distance over which he can see the image okay image of what of the object here my object it is light source na okay we need to find the greatest distance of the image of the object that is source in the mirror in the mirror okay for this what i will do it is observe carefully observe carefully here will how the light rays will be incident on the mirror on the mirror suppose let us consider this is first one and this is second one right okay na is it fine so light rays will get diverged right okay whenever we extend it to the backward to the backward such that it forms an image is it right is it right this is my image let us consider mirror as m n okay and this one as a and then c okay fine is it fine okay fine now you can see that it is i'll consider the triangle 
rank the IAC and triangle okay IMN are similar are similar right according to the properties I can write as I can write as AC by MN equal to this distance by total distance here it is 2L so this distance is L means I can say this from I to the mirror will also be L okay so the total distance L plus 2L L plus 2L that is the total distance this one this total distance will be 3L so 3L by L so that is given as okay AC MN it is Dina okay that is 3 so AC it must be 3D okay now fine is it fine see So simple. Okay, we need to find the object, and from the object, light rays will be incident such that the light rays will be reflected. Okay, reflected. Okay, whenever we extend the light rays to the in the backward direction, then we'll get the image will be formed. Okay, like this, like this. So answer will be 3D. Okay, fine. Now, can we see another question? Write on the another question. Write on the another question. That is, find the, find the minimum size of mirror, minimum size of mirror, required required to see the to see the full image of a wall behind a man behind a man standing at the Standing at the center of room. Okay. Center of room. Where capital H is the height of the wall. Height of wall. Okay. Na? Height of the wall. Write on the options as 2H, H by 3, and then 3H, and then H by 2. Okay? Fine. Okay, fine. You can see the question. You can see the question. It is, we need to find the minimum size of mirror what is the minimum size of mirror required right see i underlined to see the to see the full image full image okay of a wall okay of a wall Behind a man standing at the center of room. A man is standing at the center of the room. Okay. Center of the room. Okay. Whatever I am underlining now, while reading the question, you should understand. Okay. That's why I am underlining. Where H is the 
height of the wall. That means man is standing behind the wall such that it is at the center of the room. He is at the center of the room. And capital H is the height of the wall. From this data, I want to draw the diagram. Suppose you can see the solution part. The solution part it is we are having a plane mirror. We are having a plane mirror. Suppose let us consider let us consider this is my wall. Okay, now fine. Okay, fine. They gave that it is height of the wall, it is capital H, right? This is my capital H. I'll consider it as C, D, and the mirror as M, N. M, N. Okay, fine. Okay. Now we are having the person is standing at the center of the room and behind the wall. Okay, let us consider here a person he is standing. Right? So, I want to see the image of the person. Image of the person in the wall. So, let us consider the like this. Our incident due to the property that is it will get diverges. Okay, whenever we extend it backwards, Okay, whenever we extend it backwards, then we'll have the image will be formed. Let us consider this point as A, this point as B. Since AB is parallel to CD, I can say AB is equal to H, right? Okay, now, right? Okay. AB is equal to H. AB is equal to H. Okay. Now, from the similar triangle, that is triangle EMN and triangle EAB are similar. Okay, now. So, I can write as AB by mn is equal to okay this distance this distance okay see here it is that okay from mirror to the wall it is at a distance 2x now then i can say this distance is x okay so from mirror to the wall it is at a distance 2x right so, from E to the wall, this total distance, okay, this total distance, I can say it as 3x. And from person to the mirror, it is at a distance x. So, I can write it as 3x by x. A, B is nothing but h. Mn, it is the width of the mirror. So, minimum size of the mirror required it is h by 3. Right? Okay, now. So, see the option that is here. We are having the option it is h by 3. Okay? h by 3. h by 3. That is this one. Okay, now like this. Okay, since today it is the lecture one. Okay, tomorrow we'll meet for the in the next class. We'll see the numericals on this plane mirror and the concept of relative image of the plane mirror of the plane mirror. Okay, now fine.
थैंक यू